these deportations are obviously a threat to Haiti and a threat to the entire region. Uh, 200, nearly 200 organizations, uh, professionals in, in health care, people who, who work with uh, immigrant um, communities, have called for the administration to stop these deportations and find alternatives to detention that are contingent with uh, COVID-19 um, regulations. But these deportations have continued. And since uh, in April, when the, the first set began, we've had three people test positive for COVID-19 after they've arrived in Haiti. Uh, it's, it's a disgrace. It's, it's dangerous. Uh, really for the health of the communities that uh, the, these folks are being returned to. And so we are, uh, you know, as a community, um, as people who, whose loved ones are affected or will continue to be affected by this, are calling for the de deportations to stop. In which, Dantika, you also talk about Haiti's history with what you've called past collisions with microbes. Talk about what happened after the earthquake a decade ago. Well, after the earthquake, when it seemed like this was the worst thing that could possibly happen, when 300,000 people uh, had been killed and close to 2 million people were homeless, you had the United Nations um, come and basically poison one of the uh, central rivers in Haiti, causing a cholera epidemic that killed uh, 10,000 people and, and infected uh, close to a million people. Now, the UN has never quite taken the proper responsibility. Recently, some of their own monitors have come out and said that they have not done enough um, in terms of compensating families or creating uh, the health structures. Uh, so the, the, the UN and the, the cholera epidemic has left Haiti even more vulnerable in terms of being able to, to deal with this current uh, pandemic. Certainly, the, there's a, a medical group that's uh, advising the president that's come out and said uh, that Haiti is just not ready and the deportations are adding fuel to the fire. Um, we don't have the, the, these ventilators. We don't have the beds. Um, and the, the more exposure that we're getting from this exportation of the virus, the more dangerous it is for a country that has suffered already so much through, through other exposures uh, that could have been avoided. Uh, and so people go to a wedding and, and someplace and the virus spreads. And these are called super spreader events. These deportations are international super spreader events and are putting a great deal of lives at, at risk and, and, and are offering them up to a medical system that in the, you know, the, the richest countries have uh, suffered. Imagine what it would be like in a place like that's been so battered and so mistreated uh, like, like, like we have been. Haitian people are strong. But this is just, uh, this is a lot. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us, Edwidge Dantakat, Haitian-American novelist.